Hi guys, and welcome to today's hit film tutorial video. Today I'm going to be covering one of the most basic um, and one of the most important things you need to learn when doing visual effects, and that is motion tracking. So without any further ado, let's get into how to motion track in HitFilm 4 Express. So as you can see here, I've got this video, and I've got two points which I want to track. If we play the video back, we can see that the camera moves. What I want to do is I want to track the movement of these points in the video and therefore track the movement of this camera um, as it moves around so jerkily. So to do this, I'm going to just drag my video into the editor. In fact, you don't even need to do this. All you need to do is make a composite shot because you cannot um, do motion tracking in the editor. It's uh, necessary that you create a composite shot. So I'm just going to right click and press make composite shot or you can obviously drag it into your editor like so and just press make composite shot. Alright, so now we're in our composite shot and we can begin to track. So how do we do this? We'll simply open up your video layer and we'll see this tracks and that's where we select all of our tracks. But to create a new track we have to click this plus button that's on the right here. If you can't see it then all you have to do is extend um, your bar out like this um, and press the plus button like this. Now as you can see here um, things have gone a bit crazy and our track panel is covering half the screen, um, which is not exactly what we want. Um, and that's because we're in the editing workspace. So if on a Mac we go to View, Workspace, and Compositing, we can see it looks much nicer. On Windows, there's a grid-like button next to the Undo and Redo buttons with which you can select your workspace. So once you're in Compositing, you need to go into your track panel, which is where you track, and you also need to go into your layer. And the difference between viewer and layer is that viewer um, selects all the layers in your composite shot. It's like your normal viewer. And your layer just shows you the original layer that you've selected like so. And make sure that you're selecting the tracker, otherwise uh, you can't track your video. So first of all, this is our track point. And we can move it around by dragging the red box around. We can resize it like so. And you can see we can also uh, change the anchor point like so although I would always keep the anchor point right in the middle of where um, we want to track. So what's the difference between the red box and the green box? So the red box is the object that we want to track. It is just there to say, okay, we want to track this object. And make sure that when you're tracking, um, you select just around that object that you want to track and make sure that it's got some very high contrast um, edges um, that way it'll make it much easier for the computer to track um, and you won't have to do as much manual work. Now the green box is the search area. So in every frame it's going to search for this object that's specified in the red box um, in the area of the green box. That way if you move your camera around um, then you have to make the search area bigger because the point will move around a lot. Um, but, but if you're not moving the camera at all much then just make it a little bit smaller and that way uh, the smaller you make it um, the more accurate of a track you can get, really. So that's pretty much all there is to this track point. Now, if I go back to scale to fit, um, we can now see, go into our track panel right here. Now, we can see step one and step two. The main bulk of this is step one. There's two types of tracks. There's a single point and a double point. Generally, you want to go for double points. Um, it'll be a slower track, but it's much more accurate you can also track rotation and scale data as the two move around independent of each other and that way it's a much more accurate track. However, single point um, only provides position but it's much quicker. So there are good things about that as well. Now there are two methods here, there's optical flow and template match. Optical flow is the more general use and generally you want to stick with this. Um, it allows for more errors um, in your videos and allows for the shape to warp a bit and change a bit um, as it's going through the actual video. It's a bit of a smarter tracker. Template match um, is a bit of an older tracker. It really expects you to see this specific object throughout the whole video. And if that's the case, then you might get a more accurate track with template match. Um, but for the most part, optical flow will do. Now, in general here, we have error tolerance. And pretty much that is if HitFilm notices that there's an error with the track, it will stop it for you. And 
the more tolerance you have for that, it means it'll stop it less. The less tolerance you have, it means it'll stop it a lot more. So 25% is actually a really good starting point, um, and I wouldn't really need to change that, but you can if you want to, um, with if you play around with it a bit. Optical flow. Iterations is pretty much the quality of your track. Um, so you can go from 0 to 50, as we can see in the tooltip here, um, but of course it'll make the track a lot slower um, if you set the iterations to be higher. So 15 is a, well, a, good, a good balance point. Now that's just for optical flow. In template match, we can choose for the tracker to select luminance or RGB. Um, RGB is probably more accurate, and of course we have the comparison method um, which I don't actually know all that much about, so I would leave it, leave it on the normalized correlation coefficient setting, but um, yeah, I don't really know all that much about it. And you can also reset all your values like so. So if we start with optical flow, um, all we have to do to track is simply press the track forward button. And all we have to do is now we can see that it's tracking forward quite nicely. It's really locked onto that point quite well. Um, although soon, I suspect, it will stop. So now it's stopped, um, which is a bit annoying. And just by the way, we can also track backward, so we can go to the end of the video and track backward, as well as one frame forward and one frame backward at a time. But back to the point, we've stopped tracking here, and this is what I was talking about with the error tolerance. So HitFilms noticed maybe there's a bit of an error. It thinks that on this next frame, it'll get it wrong. Um, and as we can see, if we track forward just a frame, it doesn't get it wrong, which is quite nice. So sometimes it, the hit film thinks, okay, this is an error. Really, that wasn't an error, but we can keep tracking forward. Now, hit film thinks that this is an error. It isn't an error, but um, you know, the more we track forward, we can see that really it's very far off the point. So if we go back a few frames, we can use the comma and full stop keys on our keyboard. Um, what we have to do now is literally manually position this um, to track forward properly. And HitFilm stops it for us so that it knows, okay, maybe you should manually position it on the next frame and then keep tracking like so. You can also, this is where you want to start maybe messing around with your error tolerance to get a more accurate track. So just to show you guys, I've already done a bit of a track for one point. I'm just going to set it double points now and we've got this second point and I'm just going to move it over this green part of my video here, just this little dot, and that seems good, and I'm just going to track it again like so. Now the bad thing with two points C is that if one has an error, then you know there's a double chance for error really, but with the double chance for error you also have scale and rotation and you get a much more accurate track. So as we can see I've uh, tracked these points so far, and now we can go into step two, apply to layer. And this is once you've completed the track for as long as you want. Now there are two purposes, there's transform and stabilize. The most obvious one is transform. Transform will move another layer uh, and will adjust the movement of the other layer to match the movement of this layer. So for example, if I get a point, if I just select a new layer, point, and of course this is blank because we're in our layer now, but if I position the point right on this dot here, and if I go back into our tracker, into layer, I can set the purpose to be transform, select the layer to be that new point, and because I've done double point, I can select rotation and scale as well to get a more accurate track, and I just hit apply. And now if we go back into our new point, and we go into the viewer, we can see that the new point's position and its rotation and its scale all match up directly with that point that we've tracked right there. And if we go into our properties, if we go into the transform, we can see it's created a keyframe for every single frame. Um, if you don't know what keyframes are, I've got a video on that right here. Uh, but it's created a keyframe um, for all the points at which it's tracked. But if we go back into our tracker here, um, there's also another purpose, and that is to stabilize. We don't have um, any layer option because it stabilizes the video layer itself and we can select X position, Y position, rotation and scale. If we just hit apply um, and we go back into our viewer 
Uh, let's just hide this new point for now. And we can see that now the video is really perfectly still. So what it's done is it's moved the actual video around so that this point that we've tracked is always in the center there, which is really, really nice. Now the downsides are we do have these uh, boxes around the edge. And one way to fix that is to just select new layer, point, and I'm just going to call this scaling. And we can set the scaling point to be the parent of this video layer. And what that means is if I go into the controls tab of this scaling point, anything I do to this point will also affect all of its children. So it will affect this layer right here. And we can just move it around so that it fills the frame like so. And now we've perfectly 100% stabilized the video. Um, of course, we haven't gotten rid of all the motion blur, but we've perfectly 100% stabilized the video just by tracking those two points. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go into the transform. I'm just going to remove all of these keyframes. Just go delete them. I'm going to set everything back to be normal. So I'm going to set the scale to be 100%. Okay, can get the rotation to be zero, like so. And I'm just going to remove this scaling um, and reset everything like so. And now we've just got our normal video back again. Now what we can do is actually, what I want to do here is I want to attach this to the point right here. Now you think, okay, I know how to do this. We go into the track here. Um, if we go into the track panel, and we just select the layer, select transform, we select the layer to be the graph, and we hit apply. You can do that, and that's perfectly fine. But the reason why we created a new point was so that we can use that parenting that we learned about earlier and parent everything to that new point. So if I just set the blending mode to be something like darken, um, where are we? Here we are. And I'm just going to move this to be right on the point where we want it and we can see now that it does track perfectly well but it's parented to the point and the reason why we want the point is so that we can adjust this so for example as you can see I adjusted the position of this but it didn't affect any of the keyframes and it was all relative and it still stayed tracked to that point so I can move the video layer over here and still throughout all these keyframes it's just tracked like so, and that's really useful. Another advantage of using the point right here is that you can um, track multiple things onto your video. So for example, if I drag this knife down here, rather than having to go into the, um, you know, into the tracker and hitting apply and all of that stuff, all I have to do is parent it to the new point. And now they're both tracked, like so, which is pretty cool. And again, Relative to the track, I can adjust all of these values like so. I can rotate it. I can maybe um, actually I'll rotate it like so. I'll scale it down a bit. You know, I'll move it over here to be right on that point. And that way we can have multiple things tracked to the same point like so. And that's really good advantage of using the point. So that's pretty much all there is to cover in motion tracking. There are a few other tutorials already out there in HitFilm 4 Express, um, which cover basically how to do motion tracking, but I really wanted to go right into the details of it um, and do something different from every other video that's already out there on YouTube. I hope this was useful to you guys. I hope I helped you out. Um, and as always, thank you for watching, and stay shiny.